Hey, Sifu is now officially out and it's an incredibly challenging kung fu action game. There's a lot of things you need to learn and some things that the game doesn't quite spell out for you. So we've got 10 things to break down for you. So let's get started off, of course, with number 10. Let's talk about unlocking moves. Now, you probably know at least how these work by now. You can buy into them multiple times to permanently unlock them. And we personally think it's better to just focus on getting one move permanently before trying another move. But, you know, you're free to bounce around and choose different things if you want. But some moves are definitely more useful than others. Uh, here's what we think you should get first. The strong sweep focus is like an absolute necessity. It's just a straight upgrade from the starter focus move and is basically better in every way. It's an attack that can knock down an enemy at any time, which both disarms them and leaves them vulnerable for more hits. So that's incredibly useful, especially for some of the bosses when it works. Uh, the snap kick is also incredibly good. It's a great kind of get in there attack that lets you clear the distance between yourself and an enemy with some ease and it catches them by surprise. Uh, environmental mastery is also key especially when you get to later levels where more and more enemies are carrying weapons. Uh, being able to quickly kick a weapon at an enemy's face is super useful for stunning them and is all around really helpful for easily taking on a whole group of nasty enemies. Now, Weapon Mastery is another straight upgrade. It's one of the more expensive abilities, so I get most of these other ones first, but it makes it so you can keep using a weapon long after it would normally break. It just makes weapons last longer, which is always, of course, really helpful. Helpful. Now, next at number nine, uh, divide and conquer if you want to survive. Now, with this combat, it's just important to remember that you can very often get away. And in many cases, repositioning is the best thing you can do. Many fights start with you being surrounded, but you don't just have to stand there and take it. You can freely dash away at any time and get to a better position. You just have to be careful. This is especially useful for like when you get ambushed in awkward locations or when you're just stuck in the middle of some dangerous enemies like the larger heavy guys or an empowered enemy. Now, when dealing with these guys, it's almost always better to just get away from them than clear out the weaker enemies first before finally dealing with the tough guys, because on their own, they can be pretty easy to deal with, but with a group, they can be pretty annoying. There are a lot of environments where you might not think to move around when the fighting starts, but they can sometimes become much simpler if you just get away and take a look around real quick. There may be lots of weapons actually laying around or ledges to knock enemies off, for example, and having access to that stuff can make a lot of the fight's way easier. Seriously, the amount of times I've played a level and didn't realize there was a weapon hiding in the corner, and then when I finally found out, it changed everything. So if you feel stuck, don't be afraid to move around. Separating the enemies and taking them out one-on-one -on -one is a really simple strategy to avoid a lot of unnecessary deaths. Next at number eight, if you wanna do well in the game, the one thing you absolutely gotta learn is high guard and low guard. It seems like it's hard to tell what most attacks are, but it's actually much simpler than it may look at first. All you really need to know is that if an attack looks low, like a sweep kick or something like that, then it's definitely a low attack. Pretty much everything else is gonna be a high attack. So if you wanna avoid enemy attacks, then the high guard will dodge almost everything most enemies throw at you. Even if you do end up getting hit with a low attack once in a while, a lot of the time you'll end up blocking it anyway, so it's not too bad. Eventually you'll get used to blocking high and low, but for a good chunk of the the game, you could easily get away with just high guarding nonstop, and you'll avoid most enemy attacks as long as you get the timings right. That's our personal experience. You may disagree. Some people may want to approach that a little bit differently, but we got by okay. Now, next at number seven, you might know this if you've jumped in from the start, uh, weapons are super useful. Uh, they make it way easier to break an enemy's guard and do some damage, but what's super underrated is that you can throw them. Now, depending on the weapon's durability, it'll either break or you can pick it back up again. But either way, throwing a weapon at someone is just a really good way to do a ton of structure damage really quick. Uh, the best time to throw a weapon is when there are other weapons available or when you can reliably expect the enemy to get stunned from the throw. Now, one of the best ways to use thrown weapons is against certain tough weapon-wielding enemies. Basically, don't be afraid to chuck your weapons around. You know, they're not really long-term things anyway. And sometimes it's a little bit more effective than just using them normally. Now, next at number six, one interesting thing about this game is that you can sometimes find keys and other items that can unlock shortcuts and make going back through a level much faster. Uh, usually these are found in the same level and are basically used to more easily reach a boss, but that's not always the case. Be sure to look around every level and, and look for some connections. An example that might help you out, you know, in the museum level, the third level, after you get the museum key card that allows you to take the stairs, it's possible to fight a mini boss enemy at the end of the hall, which has a code that can be 
used on a door in the second level of the club. It really only gets you another clue to add to the board, but it's still just a cool feature to look out for if you want to get all the collectibles in the game. Now, next at number five, all the bosses in Sifu are tough, but for most people, the biggest hurdle, at least at the start, to get over is this guy, the fighter, or Sean, who is the boss of the club, the second boss. This guy can be pretty brutal, but there are a few things you can do to make the fight a little easier. Now, if you can beat this guy without too many deaths, then you'll be really well prepared, basically, for the rest of the game. And the lessons you have to learn to beat him make the future bosses not quite as bad to deal with. So here's the thing about this dude. He's really aggressive, his attacks hit hard and are very difficult to dodge sometimes, but he has one weakness. Almost all of his attacks are high. That means with the proper timing, you can high guard through all of his attacks during the first phase of the fight. Uh, all it takes is some patience to get the timing down. Now, another helpful thing to keep in mind is that there are weapons on the left and right of the walls that you can grab. Using them will do a lot more damage to him than if you try to fight him normally. Otherwise, be sure to use your focus attacks as soon as they become available, because using strong sweep focus to knock him over and beat him on the floor is just easy damage. Now, the second phase of the fight is tougher because he adds in this low sweep that is pretty hard to avoid, but at least for now, it's not a big deal because you can at least block it partially. Now, the main thing to know about bosses is that there's always something to learn and there's really always something to embrace, but the core fundamental is, is learning the high and low guards for them and the timing. When you're first figuring out a boss, don't try to prioritizing parries right away. It works out differently for every boss. Just be patient and don't spam any of them and you'll start to learn. Now, next at number four, shortcuts, like we said, are great for getting through a level faster, but sometimes using them can lead you to missing out on getting to use certain shrines and the useful upgrades that they offer, which kind of sucks, but sometimes you make the most of it with some clever exploration. Now, for example, in the museum level, you eventually get an elevator key that you can use to completely bypass the museum and go straight right up to the boss. Now, that can be pretty handy, but using the elevator right away makes it so you miss out on the shrine on the fourth floor. So instead of rushing straight to the elevator to fight the boss, go up the stairs to the fourth floor, get the shrine, and then take the elevator. You gotta fight smart, not hard. You know, you will have to get through a few more fights to do this, but none of them are super hard, and now you get access to two shrines instead of one. Uh, there's a few more spots where this thing kind of works, so just remember where the shrines are, because sometimes you don't have to skip them to use the shortcut, and they give you those key little bits of success. Now at number three, one life-saving thing about this game is that certain moves and abilities have invincibility frames to them, which uh, when used intelligently can get you through some pretty tough situations. The most obvious move with the iframes is of course the takedowns, which makes it possible to wade into a swarm of attacking bad guys and get out of there without a scratch as long as you time your takedown correctly. If you see a bunch of dudes starting to swing for you, but you see a takedown available, hit that takedown. It'll save your life. Now another very useful ability is the downed enemy attack. You're completely invincible while that animation is playing. So it's another reason why the strong sweep focus is so good. And then of course there's the dodge, which you use if on a controller with the right trigger. It, it's easy to get into the habit of abusing that when you're starting the game. I know I did. Uh, when you dodge, the first frames are invincible, but it seems the tail end of the animation leaves you pretty vulnerable, which will frustrate you a lot for a lot of the harder enemies and some of the earlier bosses. Unlike certain games, uh, dodging to the sides is actually not as effective in this game compared to dodging backwards. So you move further when when dodging backwards, which makes it easier to get out of reach of an enemy. Dodging is best used for positioning rather than strictly a tool you use for defense. You should really focus more on parrying and high and low guarding, but dodging can often at least save your life as long as you're not totally relying on it. Rely on it too much and it can get really difficult to get it hidden on enemies and especially against bosses. Now down to number two, uh, they give you a lot of options for upgrades when you visit a shrine and it can be difficult to decide which ones are best. So here's a few tips, man. Uh, in our experience, increasing structure is really important. It's not very exciting or flashy, but putting a point or two into the very first option on the menu can make surviving future battles a lot easier. Another one that we always put a point or two into is health gained on takedowns, which are great when you're trying to get through a level, but less effective when you're primarily just trying to take on bosses. And Structure Regain is a very useful one as it makes it so uh, you can restore more structure after avoiding attacks, which after a while is what you'll primarily be doing in this game when you're not parrying. Focus Reserve sounds good, but for us at least, uh, we like to put our points elsewhere and instead just stick to one good focus bar that you use very carefully over and over. Higher focus moves are pretty powerful, but we don't like having to rely on them. Instead, we think the best experience costing upgrade is weapon proficiency, which increases damage and impact 
impact when using weapons. It's not the first thing that we put point towards when using a shrine, but later in the game, doing more damage with a weapon is just useful, depending on the level you're on. Now down to number one, as you probably know by now, death is pretty complicated in Sifu. We've explained it in a lot of videos. Uh, just briefly, how it works is that every time you die, a death gets added to your counter, and then the total of that counter gets added to your age. So if your death counter is at zero, you only age one year. But if you keep getting your ass kicked and it's at six, then when you die, you'll age by six years. Every 10 years, one of the five pieces of your pendant breaks. So when you get past 70, the pendant is broken. And if you die one more time, then it's the final death and you have to restart the level. So a high death counter is bad and the most likely place that you'll be ranking into death is against a boss. So once you've completed most of the abilities you'll want off the skill tree, it's a really good idea to always save up a thousand experience so you can spend it on totally removing your death counter when you find a shrine. It may seem like a lot, but making it so you only age one year rather than four or five when you die can make a huge difference. This can completely turn around losing a run and it also just can inject General, give you more time to spend with a boss. If you just cannot get through a boss without dying a few times, then clearing the death counter gives you a lot more wiggle room for when you have to take on the next boss. But it's a lot. The whole game is a lot. Take deep breaths. Remember to just take breaks. And most importantly, remember to have fun. Uh, these are some things that the game doesn't quite tell you in Sifu that we thought would help you out. If you got any more tips for people, be sure to leave them in the comments. And if this helped you out and you enjoyed it, clicking the like button is all you got to do. It really helps us out. But good luck. Have fun. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you guys next time.